Welcome to the ATP Projects. You're with your host, Jeff and Steve. How are you going, mate? Good, mate. Good. Really good. good. This is exciting. Well, we are doing the top five best and the top five worst uh, fat-burning ingredients that you can be using, get your hands on. Some of them are legal, Steve. Some mm. of them are sold every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to start off with the worst. Yes. And then we're going to get to the good stuff at the end. Yeah, so they have to hang around to the end to, to know what to do. Otherwise, they just get bad advice for the first half of the podcast. That's it. Well, they, they know what not to take, <laughs> Yeah, Steve. exactly. And this was tricky because I had to pick ones that were actually used for fat-burning yep. instead of just a random something that's never used for it. And the worst one of these is actually could have gone into the best pile. Wow. So the, the very, very worst one could be the best one. And I know that's a bit cryptic and a bit weird, but we've got to wait till the end of the podcast to find out which one it is. Well, Steve, you know, we've been around for a while. I mean, I started back I'm in the young. industry in 2002. You you, you were giving medicine to, to sick dinosaurs when you were, <laughs> right. you were younger. I was using and that was when you were <laughs> old, right? So, I mean, but like in terms of being around, they say there's nothing new under the sun. And that's that, right. And, and that and that is is uh, interesting. Yeah. But I think in terms of a lot of these ingredients, and I don't even know where you're going, Steve. That's no, part of the thing I love about the chemistry that we have, Steve, yes, though, the yes. chemistry. Yeah. Oh, that went. <laughs> that took an unexpected turn. Um, <clears throat> I'm not surprised, really, though. But um, is that um, I, I don't know what you're going to be talking about, but mm. I have an idea of 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 in in the industry there has been a heck of a lot of hype. I mean, part yeah. of the reason why. Uh, Tony and I started ATP Science was to actually overcome the hype mm-hmm. and look at all the rubbish that was out there in the marketplace that was being set, sold as, hey, the miracle pill, the yep. snake oil merchants. Yep. And, and that, I hate, I really hate that because it damages a really great industry where mm-hmm. there's some amazing information out there in terms of effective products that can work for you. But mm-hmm. um, Steve, without further ado, do you want to start at number five and go all the way up to number one? So yeah. we'll start at the the the, the fifth yeah. worst it's, it's, supplement. It's this one's not a bad supplement, and it's used oh. for things like cholesterol, and okay. it's used so it's got some benefit in the body. But yeah. they also use it for weight loss, okay. and it's just not that effective for weight loss. What is it? It's called um, beta glucan. Beta glucan. Yeah. Okay. And you've heard of that? That's found in cereals. It's a soluble fiber. And what, what people are doing <laughs> is they're taking this supplement to lose weight. And they've done a big meta-analysis and of randomized trials on this one, which was published in 2019. So I'm referencing a, a few data here now. Of all the studies, mm-hmm. when you take this, now you've got to remember, let's say I'm 120 kilos and I want to lose weight mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I need to lose 40 kilos to get to my current weight now, which is 80. Mm-hmm. So you've got to lose 40 kilos, 30 kilos, 20 kilos. If you take this supplement over a period of months and all this sort of thing, you lose 0.77 kilograms. Okay, Steve. So how on earth then is this something that people were recommending as a good additive to, was it used in cereals, yep. foods, that sort of thing, was it? So it's more about the, as opposed to the supplement market, yep. more the food market yep. with a, a product that they could have a claim about. Correct. And 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 the, what, what they were claiming with this one is because it's a soluble fiber, right. fiber has zero calories because yep. it's not absorbed in the body. It's mm-hmm. broken down by the microbiome. Mm-hmm. So it has some benefits. Yes. There's nothing, nothing wrong with soluble fiber. I'm just picking sure. on its weight loss thing. I'm, you know, people write in and say, oh, beta glucan is great for this. It is, yes, but we're talking about a weight loss or fat loss supplement. And so 0.77 kilos over the term of all these studies. Wow. And, and what it did do it, was it also didn't affect, no effect on the weight circumference or energy intake, except for if you took a lot of this. If you took four grams of this, weirdly, it actually increased your appetite. Wow. <laughs> How does that work? It must be feeding the, the bacteria in the it gut, did. right? Yes. So, Okay. And, well, and, and that would be the uh, the firmicutes that it was feeding. Exactly. Oh, here you yeah, go. I was going to surprise you with that one, but that, oh. that's exactly right. It, 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 if you have too much of this fiber, which yep. is good for you, you know, yep, yep. but it, it fed the firmicutes, which caused you to overeat and eat more. Wow. So when I say it's the worst, yes, there was a mild weight loss, you know, 0.77, yep. three quarters of a kilogram out of your 20 or 30, 40 you want to lose, which uh-huh. is bugger all anyway. But if you had more of it, you would actually increase your energy intake, and it was over four grams a day. Name and shame, Steve. Tell us, I mean, who is using this bullcrap ingredient? Well, I mean, who's out there doing it? Do you, can you, do you want to mention any brands, or do you want to just mention specifically, oh, you don't want to get sued. You're a no. chicken. You're a, you're a lily ass, I think. I, think um, no, I mean, this is, this is it, it's found in, in cereals. <laughs> and, um, of course, the it's other- found in cigarettes. Cereals. Oh. <laughs> Cigarettes. Cigarettes more. are actually very good for weight loss. Oh, yeah. 
The, yeah, the permanent the, weight loss. Yeah, permanent Irreversible weight loss, weight loss yeah. down to zero weight loss. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you just measure weight loss no, as a metric, cigarettes no. work, but we don't want to do that. In fact, they used to prescribe- Well, it's pros and cons, right? Yeah. I mean, yes, hey, it does. And look, jockeys and all the rest of it were encouraged to take up smoking when they were young to help yep. stunt their growth and keep their weight down. Yep. Um, yeah, but then you'd die of various forms of cancer. But, but but apart from cancer and dying, it was fine. Yeah. So, yep. so, so of course, the other problem with this, of course, that's found in cereals. So cereals themselves are actually good for putting weight on because, of course, refined cereals are found in your, you know, they're full of empty calories mm. and carbohydrates. So if you're chasing beta-glucan from cereals, mm. you're going to be eating a lot of cereals, yeah. which tend to put more weight on. That's it. Okay. So it's, a, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a tricky one. So beta-glucan. Yeah. Avoid it. Avoid it if you're trying to lose weight. It's great for your Steve, bowels. Steve, are there still companies out there right now? Have you noticed any companies out there right now saying contains bitter glucan to su- support weight loss? Yes. Yes. Okay. It was a low-level claim on a product. Okay. So keep your eye out for that, guys. Yeah. Interesting one, Steve. Not a bad ingredient. Won't kill you anything, but it will not help you with weight loss significantly, according to a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So pretty good evidence mm-hmm. that it doesn't really work. It doesn't in- decrease your waist, waist circumference, and that was the other tricky one, is because when you ate a lot of the grains with the beta glucan in it, it's stacked on way around your waist. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you had you had big problems there. So okay. that's that's one Let's that we can put off the list. Yeah. Now the next one's an interesting one, and this was updated in 2020, as the title says, and it's it's again an ingredient that's used for cer- set certain things that is very good. Like this is raspberry ketones. They're mm. extraordinarily good for your brain. Yeah. And very good for a few other things. They're very good for ulcers. Yeah. And they're very good for treating that sort of thing. But what a lot of people are using them for is weight loss. See, we did a podcast, I think, breaking down raspberry, raspberry yep. ketones a while ago, showing that uh, a lot of people and a lot of the science, and, and this is the thing, I guess, specifically in the fitness market as well, too, is that um, yeah, especially your harder-edged guys mm. and girls, the ones that are competing, they're prepared to try new things and yep. use themselves as a bit of a guinea pig. Mm-hmm. Is there any sort of you know bit of science out there? Yeah, I'm prepared to give it a try and see what happens. But unfortunately, the science caught up with this one. And for weight loss. Yeah, for weight loss, it's not that great. And you got to remember raspberry ketones, like, like ketones themselves are breakdown of fat products. This is where the confusion comes in because there is the ketogenic diet, which mm. is good for fat loss. Well, in fact, you only produce ketones when you're burning fat. Yep. So if you're producing ketones in your body, which everybody watching this, pod, listening to this podcast now are burning, are making ketones because they're burning some level of fat. Yep. Now, what level of fat depends on what they did this morning and what they're eating. If they're eating a lot of carbohydrates, they'll burn less fat. If they're having more fat in their diet, less carbohydrates, they'll be burning more fat. Mm-hmm. And that's what the ketogenic diet is. It's a high fat, low carbohydrate diet developed in the 20s. And we were talking about the 20s before. Yep. It was developed for uh, autistic kids and for uh, epilepsy and it stabilizes the brain. It's extraordinarily good for your brain. So yeah. again, it's been just... better fuel for the brain than, than, than sugars and carbohydrates. Well, sugar, blood sugar. Fast right? so, better. So far superior. And, uh, you know, again, we've spoken about other athletes that use yep. it as well too for mitochondrial density. It's actually yep. a really good way to sort of um, and enhance your body's uh, ability to use energy, correct? Yeah. So, so it's almost like training at, at altitude, and then you introduce carbohydrates, and you you go brilliant. Kick ass. Is, is that t- typically how it works? Exactly, Steve? and it works. It works. That people take it as a like a, a pre workout thing, right. where they take it and it really amps their brain up. Yeah. So they they feel so you feel great. good. You feel great. But it's like um, it's the byproduct of it's a, so ketones effectively is a byproduct of utilizing fat for fuel. Yeah. If you're just putting straight ketones in then you're fooling yourself because the, when you're measuring your ketones, uh, all you're measuring is what you've consumed. Correct. You want your body to be producing those ketones through yes. oxidizing and burning your own fat. Correct. However, the supplements out there, what they'll say is, oh, we're, we're trying to use this as a primer to get people to sort of you know, start burning fats and all the rest of it. Um, I don't know, Steve, if you subscribe to that or not. Is there any science behind no, that? it's not because um, this is a, a caloric food. As I said, very good for your brain. So if you need a good pep up, Mm. to get to the gym or go for the mm. run. Sure. And look, I think that's where a lot of these yeah. supplements have become popular. These shysters, as we should call them, are effectively selling supplements that make you feel good because you've got the ketones yeah. and you're, you're measuring on your ketones. Oh, look at all the, look how purple that stick is. But um, it's actually doing nothing for your fat loss. No, it's not um, doing nothing for your fat loss. It'd be interesting to actually see if it has a negative impact on fat loss, Steve. That, that's actually a real question. Well, in this day, they, there was only one study on, and this is, this is 2020 or 2021 published in Plants because you've got to remember Ketones are found in raspberries, yep. natural about two or three milligrams. Yep. 
Um, and But what they actually do is they're very, very good for like the liver and that sort of stuff. And there's a diagram here which shows how raspberry ketones are very, very good for protecting liver disease. And in fact, what they did in rats mm. was they gave them a toxic thing for liver, which is trichloromethane, which is like a, a very bad carcinogen. And what it is is the raspberry ketones protect the liver from the damaged uh, caused by that chemical. Cool. So it's, it's a, you know, I'm not picking on it. Like if, you, if you're taking it, it's not dangerous. It's not going to, it's actually good for you, but it's very, very good for the liver and it's very, very good for your heart as well. Mm. So it's good very good for that sort of thing. So there's lots of data on this. It's great. It's used, as I said, for gastric ulcers. Okay. So as I said, but just for weight loss, it doesn't work. It upregulates NRF2. Remember, we were talking about yeah, that yeah. nuclear urate uh, factor two, which is terrific. So it's got a lot, a lot of research on its benefits. And of course, in the brain, it's terrific. All right. But fat loss. Not not great for fat loss. That was the, that was the only problem. So again, I, I I tried to pick one that people are using, and I think people are using raspberry ketones for weight loss. Out it's there. become less popular, I think, thankfully, because of some yeah. of the podcasts that we've been putting out yeah. there that people have been listening to and and shaping obviously a bit of the industry. Um, but also, I think you know a lot of this information comes out. So hmm. now, now now with ketones, you you, you want to be making them so the best time to burn fat is first thing in the morning, right? When you haven't eaten for ten hours or so, yeah. And so you've got nothing to, you've got no food to burn. Mm -hmm. So you're only going to burn your gut or your butt. uh, And that's what you're going to burn. Gut, so, gut or butt? Yep, that both ways. Like, Steve, is this a new uh, workout? To... <laughs> Absolutely. It's called the gut butt workout. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> now, there, there was, a, uh, luckily, that, that helped me um, put all this information together. It was a great uh, big review, critical review of the data done. Um, and it was published in uh, 2019 about all the safe uh, weight loss supplements. There's some really good ones in here, which we'll get to in our next podcast, okay, aren't we? Cool. So we're not just going to give you bad news here. We're going to give you good news too. Good. Um, I like good news, Steve. Yeah, I like good news too because because we want to know what actually helps us. And um, I haven't got to the worst supplement yet, but there's a couple in here which showed very poor data as of 2019. Yeah. And one of the ones was glucomab. Remember konjac flour? I do. Yeah. So konjac obviously is a, a low carbohydrate yep. um, compound that people were making into yeah noodles mm. and uh, and other things like that as well too. Yeah. And they're using that for weight loss. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, this one only burns literally in in, in the placebo controlled trials one pound, which is four hundred grams. Over what period? Over over twelve weeks in this particular study. Wow. Four hundred so, grams is like going to the toilet. M- my, my uh, not for me, Steve. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll have you know. Yeah, that's it's a, like at least double that. That's about no, that'd be about five hundred mils. So you, you know, I'm just trying to. Yeah, yeah. So, but what's interesting, Steve, is that I thought the whole idea around konjac flour yeah. was um, more to do with uh, zero calories mm. um, and and replacing that with. So you know, obviously having you know your, your stir fry or you're yep. having what have you. Take your, your egg noodles or even your rice noodles, ah. which are a bit better. Use that, and so yes. therefore you would get this feeling of of fullness, mm-hmm. uh, but not the calories. And that's what they that's what they they just didn't they didn't do that because when, once you cut out a food out of somebody, it changes the out you know the, the therapeutic effect of a food. Yeah. Um. You know. So what they did, they didn't do that. That, that would be the sensible way to use these things is yeah. to cut out the bad things and put in a good thing like this. Yeah. But what they did with this, so they just simply added a dose, a four gram dose of this to everyone's diet. Ah. So, so that 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 keeps the randomization. So they just have one simple ah. variable. See, and, and this is where mm. I guess you have to look at how to use a horse. And and you, yeah. and again, Steve, I'm not saying that that study isn't true and that konjac is is great. But I'd look at it this way: if it gives you that feeling of satiety, yep. which stops obviously the additional calories and gives you that feeling of fullness, mm. maybe we should have a look into that a little bit further. Yeah, at this point, konjac's number three. It's number three because um, using it on its own. Doesn't uh, do anything. Doesn't do anything. I, so, I don't know how people are using konjac, but that's not what I would have used no, it for. I would have used it as a replacement for egg noodle in my, yep. you know, konjac. And, and then it would work good yeah. because you're cutting out, you know, it's like um, our healthy ice cream, for example. Mm. Um, terrific because that that tastes absolutely wonderful. I, I think everyone agrees that nowadays. And the good, the other good thing about it is you su- you can literally substitute your junk ice cream that's mm. full of sugar yeah. with our ice cream and it just, it just makes – uh, uh, you're still not depriving yourself and you're not craving other junk foods as well because you're having a food that tastes remarkable. 
this product placement was yeah, brought to you by ATP Science. It's just, uh, it, actually, I love it, Steve. Well, uh, you, know, you know, it's not. I mean, you know, it's like you're there and you've kind of got your. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. I mean, they used to do it with a certain uh, cola beverage, right? They would just be. <laughs> and then when they would drink it, though, I don't know if you. Yeah, know, yeah. It would kind of be like this, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, but that was just a uh, ad hoc. You know, comment. It was well, that, that's my gin, actually. I just put it in there because people can't, gin. can't what is, it? It. is it slow gin? You know, the, the, with the berry? Because that's, that doesn't look like gin to me, mate. <laughs> I, just, I just was on the spot. I'm thinking, what alcohol drink looks like that? I could have asked Brooklyn. She knows about Long alcohol drinks. tea <laughs> kind of looks a bit like that, Steve. I'm, I'm lit- yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm a non-drinker, so I wouldn't have a clue. No. I just wanted to sound cool. Yeah. Didn't work. Did no, it? I didn't. Didn't no. work. No, no didn't they're, work. they're literally vegan aminos, unfortunately. They're, they're nothing special. What do you there. mean? Oh, you mean the vegan aminos from ATP Sign, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, good one, Steve. That's the cola uh, one. I love yeah. the cola one. Yeah, no, it's gone. No, nobody else likes it. Just it like... was just you buying it, Steve. Yeah. I mean, so. I love it. It's, yeah. a, it's a terrific. <laughs> Crap, actually. Um, you, actually, you, it's a great product, but it just didn't sell well. So. Oh, that's a great product. Yeah. So there's plenty left, Steve, for you. Yeah, <laughs> good. I'm into it. Get into it, it, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, in fact, if there's a nuclear winter or something, we'll be fine. Oh, we have, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we like vegan aminos at our wazoos, literally. <laughs> It's great. That's not how you take it, by the way. Just no, for no, you saying. don't. Yeah. Brooklyn, make a note of that. in the other end. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. end, not that not end. That end. Uh, but talking about number twos. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's talk about number two. Number twos. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about number twos. So with the conjac flower. No, I mean, look, let's get, let's leave number three and go to number two. <laughs> oh, number two. That's yeah. right. We're counting backwards. I thought it was up to number four. No. How terrible is that? Yeah. Well, no. you mentioned this looked like tea before, and in yes. fact, number four comes in is one of the teas is our uh, green tea. Ah. I mean, you I know what? like it. A green tea is very popular now. People are very going, popular now. You're getting into the into the mainstream, and, Steve. And, you're coming it, out of the 1800s. Yep, it it does work at a really really high dose. But there's a problem with that. There's a problem with high doses. Would so it be thyroid. Thyroid is a problem with green tea, and also there was uh, cases reported of, of 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 hepatic problems with high dose green tea. Right, not which green is liver issues. Right, liver issues. Yeah, this is the big blow up that we had in yep. Australia a few yep, years back. That's right. right. Which which um, I don't think I can yeah. really comment on that. All I'll yep. say though is that look into that information, look past the headline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what they did was they um, when when you prescribe a more moderate dose, like there's one study here, three grams, it ended up being negligible amounts of weight loss was the was the study. So there was no. Real difference. There was a non-statistical slight improvement. What is it again? CG. I forget. Oh, Cata- epigaligo catch ECGC. That's right. Yeah, epigaligo E-G-C. Yeah. And, and so the high, the whole idea around green tea, because uh, I know people are sucking down green tea. Mm. You know, like no tomorrow. Which look from a flavored water point of view, if people are drinking more water, yeah. that's a good thing. Yep. But what was the whole idea around green tea? Minimal caffeine. So it wasn't really the caffeine content, no. was it? What was what was the the magic bullet in the in the green tea? Well, the ECGC was thought to be one of the uncoupling proteins. Ah, okay. Yeah, which we're going to get to in a, a, a number five. It's our number one, Steve. Number one, yes. You're, you're going the wrong way. That's right. Yeah. God, blimey, I've got to get this right. Yeah, how do I count backwards? Yeah. There's an Alzheimer's test you count backwards from seven. Oh, gee, I'd struggle with that. Wouldn't I? I'd you fail, fail, Steve. I'd fail with that. Yeah. Um, so, so what it does is, is it causes is uncoupling protein. So, so what that means is if you've got a cell, and I'll do the technical and I'll do the non-technical, what happens is, is a lot of the energy of the cell is removing protons, right? Right. And uncoupling protein does this. It opens up the lid and lets, <laughs> and got, lets protons uh, flow in. So the body goes, oh, shit, and low pH, I've got to make more energy uh-huh. to pump it out. Uh-huh. So that's what it thought to do, and it does it super-duper high doses. So actually you're just burning um, fuel and it's likened to driving your car with the handbrake slightly on. So the problem is though to get an effective amount where that works, yeah. you're going to screw your thyroid. Yeah, screw your thyroid in hepatic problems. So there's and there's, liver problems. Yeah, liver problems, I right. should say. Okay. And so so the the issues with that is and and of course the other problem with green tea is that it's not like a, a conjac flower where it, it's something you extra drink. And what they found with a lot of people drinking green tea is they're full of sugar. <laughs> So, so some of the studies, because green tea is not a, it's a bittery, tanniny yeah. type of flavor. So yeah. people go, oh, well, I'll put some honey in that and that'll be healthy. And yeah. it's just empty calories. And, and, you know, they're having it in all these sugary drinks. And of course, drinking more of it because it, it so some of the products were very high in sugar. Yeah. Which of course is Counter- terrible. Yeah, yeah, kind of sugar. Or so what does it do to the thyroid, Steve? <laughs> yeah, what it does is it it it's quite high in um, what they call halides. Now that's I'll get technical and get simple. It's group seven on the periodic table, mm-hmm. and that that includes one of them's iodine, 
One of them is bromide, one of them is fluoride, one of them is chloride. I right? thought the iodine was good for the thyroid. It is, but it, it has an affinity, right? It binds it. So this is part of that table that binds into the thyroid. Correct. And right. so it takes away iodine. Right. Because it's similar. It's got the same so charge. So what, what, is, what, is, what is the compound called, Steve? Sorry. Well, fluoride is quite high in there. Oh, yeah. really? In green tea. Some of the green teas they tested have, have very high levels of fluoride which is not very good for your thyroid. Fluoride water in the body, it, it, there's no role for fluoride. So right. what it does is it knocks out iodine. Yeah. So it suppresses the thyroid function. Yeah. So it, it substitutes it. So, so green tea, and this is actually a little bit more popular, Steve, mm. than, than a lot of them. So it's, yep. that's a big no-no. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's and, a, and look, to answer the question seriously, as far as water is concerned, yeah, that's the one thing I spend a lot of money on. Mm. And actually not that much money, to be honest, but the whole office here, we all get it yeah. from a, a spring a spring water, which yeah. hasn't been, you know, treated with aluminium or fluoride. Yeah. So. And and the, the problem is that 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 with green tea, and this is the other thing is, is I can't really elaborate on the biochemistry, but it upregulates something in the body, which is called P53, yeah. which is very good. Right. So at low doses, it's terrific for the body. Mm -hmm. I can't say what that does, but you can Google it. Mm. So, so this this is green tea, and so I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, and it's not you shouldn't give up your green tea. It's just that for fat loss, it's not that good because of the the, the fluoride concentrations, and also that people drinking it with sugar yeah, because yeah. of the taste. Yeah. So if you're using an artificial sweetened form of green tea, and yeah. you're having just a mild amount, is there something to consume a little bit more water, Steve? Do you have a problem with that? No, not really. If if the artificial sweetener is a, is a good one, yeah, it comes from a West African um, fruit. Yeah, and look, Steve, oh, we've we've Steve. spoken about that. Um, you know, before in our um, not all, you know, non nutritive sweeteners mm. are, are considered to be the same. Some are actually quite bad and very carcinogenic, yeah. right through to, um, you know, other ones that are better for you. So, mm. um, yeah. It's a no, terrific one. Number one. Oh, are you ready for this one? I am. Now, this is the one I could have put in the other best ones too. All right. I'll, I'll, Gee, I'll, Steve, you, you're not really selling me on this as being oh, shock and horror and this is right. terrible. Well, I'll give you the good news and then I'll give you the bad news. All right. All right. You want the good news? Yes. Well, is you it when you, think you're going to give me the good news. So, yes, I do, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> when you take this as directed, the average studies showed that you would lose without exercise and without changing your diet 1.5 kilograms per week. What and then why is it? That's, <laughs> well, what is this called and where do I get it? Right. Okay. This right. is this is where the other issues come in. Yes. Now, but that, that if you take it as directed, yeah, um, then you will lose one point five kilograms a week over all the studies. That's what they found. Well, I, I'll tell you one thing. Then I yeah. know this for a fact. If that's true, it's illegal. It is. It's definitely illegal. And there's probably some health issues. There's a well. few problems. That what what this is. This is a chemical called called dinitrophenol. Right. Ah, the old. Um, Insect killer. Yes, it's an insecticide. It's yeah. also used for uh, photographic things. So it's an industrial chemical. It's used for wood staining. And what they found, the people working with it just basically faded away. Wow. They lost all this weight. They couldn't put weight on. Wow. And so someone from Stanford, of course, said, well, give me a test of that. And it wasn't at the doses they tested. It wasn't that toxic for the body. Okay. So they um, marketed it as a, as a weight loss drug and people were losing, on average, 1.5 kilograms of weight per week. When was that, Steve? What period? Was that, that would have been in the 70s? Oh, oh. <laughs> you, you know what? That's because Steve was born in the yeah. 1920s. He he loves it. Coming up to 100. I remember those pre, yes, eh? pre days when they, you know, there was no crashes on the stock market in 1929. I remember that. Of course there wasn't. No. Nah, That's a conspiracy. A great post-World War One in 1918 when that finished. and the Roaring uh, 20s was a roaring magical 20s. time. Yeah. They were the roaring 20s. Yes, I know. You know, they were like the stock market. People were buying against their house to buy flowers, you know, like the orchid Tulips. flowers. Oh, yeah, oh. That, that, that was just going up and up in value. So everyone was oh, making all this money. Hang on. Wasn't that the tulips? Wasn't that in the 1600s? I, I, oh, my history's not yeah. great, Steve. You, well, you'd you'd I'll, remember better I'll, than yeah, I. Yeah, when I was around there. So Yeah. Um, but, so, but, but basically so this, in the 20s they found out that this stuff was – was pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So, it wasn't so I mean, that does sound pretty awesome. No, they just sold it over the counter too. So, so then what, what ended up happening? Oh, well, let's say, you know, you're overweight yeah. and, um, you know, you want to lose 40 kilos and someone says you've got to take 100 milligrams, which is the standard dose, no more than 200 a day. Yeah. Some people said, bugger that, I'm going to take 400 a day. Right. Because that's the nature of humans. Yeah. And so people were, were dying. And, and the, the way they were dying was actually of a temperature. Because you've got to remember that this is an uncoupling protein agent, a very, very potent one. So it caused an influx of H plus ions or protons into the cell, and that caused 
you know, the, the body to create all this energy to kick the H pluses out. But it's like, a, you know, you've heard of the song, the Kiwi song, Six Months in a Leaking Boat. The Kiwi song, absolutely. Yep. That's, Where they're constantly bailing split water ends. out. Split ends, absolutely. Great band. Yeah. Yep. And so they're all day, they're just bailing water, and that's what all their energy is going into. So if you were bailing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you lose 1.5 kilos a week. Well, and that's what 100 milligrams. So, so then people started dropping dead? They, they are, yeah. Apart from death, the, the side effects. The first side effect of death was in 1916 of this, where the person died after an occupational exposure and it took them 14 hours and then they died. Wow. And their temperature when they died was 40.5, which is pretty high. Not as high as the third person who died at 43 degrees Celsius. Uh, he, he had an accidental ingestion of it. And so his uncoupling just went on. His metabolism went through the roof. Right. And so it ramps up your metabolism day and night. And what they were finding with these people is they were sleeping in baths. Well, uh, you know, the first I heard about this was bodybuilders that would use it to yeah. get shredded for a sh show that would sleep under a fan, yeah. you know, basically, you know, the whole time. And uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently it's a yellow substance. Yeah, it's And yellow. it stains uh, permanently. It's a wood staining agent, yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. So once you get it on your fingers, that's kind of, that's there. Until the skin wears off and that sort of thing. So with this, it was, it was absolutely, and you've got to remember that the standard dose that they come up with is 100 milligrams. Some of these guys were ingesting um, four and a half to five grams. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So 50 times. So, and they died. And these, these I've got the death records here, the first record of So, so they were unintentional um that they were having? No, some of them was no, intentional. some of them. Well, for example, um, one person wanted to lose weight in a big hurry in 1934 and, and took uh, 6.06 grams in four days and died of, of temperature. You know, they just went through the roof. So, um, you know, again, it's it's very dose dependent. So if you're if you were in the middle of the Antarctic and, yep. you know, you're could you take this and survive, Steve? I mean, <laughs> well, it would help you survive yeah. at, the, at the right dose. Yeah. I mean, remember, this stuff is completely banned, completely dangerous. We're not recommending you take it, yeah. but it increases your heat production. Mm. So, uh, of course, it may help. Now, if you've got enough calories to, because, you know, if you're in the, if you're starving in the Antarctic, you'll probably starve quicker with this too. Mm -hmm. That's the problem because your, your fat will completely burn up, mm. which is, you know, but, but if you're starving and you've got to spend a night maybe, you mm. could heat yourself up if you had the right dose. Mm. It could be useful. Yeah. Um, you'd, be, you'd trim right down. But uh, That's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, well, the good one, Steve. It, it's a good one. And, um, you know, the fact that it caused hyperthermia was, was incredible. So, as I said, I could have put it in. It, it's certainly the best fat loss agent. Forget the deaths and, uh, you know, but don't worry about that. Just one second. But it was the best weight loss agent that I've ever seen at 1.5 kilos per yep. week. Now, I, it doesn't slow it. down. It doesn't taper. Mm -hmm. You just lose 1.5 kilos a week because well. it's like driving around with your handbrake on 24 hours a day. Your engine overheats eventually, of course. Mm -hmm. well, you know, so uh, it's a bit of a problem. Mm. How yeah. rapid is the weight loss after you die, Steve? <laughs> yeah, pretty quick when yeah. you, you know, you just die. And all. But, but, you know, again, this was sold over the counter. So we still only had a, a number of deaths recorded that would have been about, uh, say 30, which is a lot, mm. but you've got to think about that as being over, you know, in the last hundred years for something that was sold over the counter for weight loss. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people would have, and back then there was a lot of pressure on, on women and you can see a lot of the weight loss ones were women um, in the early days because there was a lot of pressure on them to be thin. Um, so they would say, well, I'm already thin, but I want to be thinner because, you know, I want to, I don't know what I want to fit into the corset order. <laughs> War well, back in I the twenties. What you want to do? Too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, with the pressure to be thin um, back then was was incredible. So, um, you know, so there were people that were taking huge, huge doses, but losing huge, huge weight. You know, the highest temperature here is is one hundred and six Fahrenheit, or uh, forty one point one degrees. Oh no, someone got to one hundred and nine point four at forty three degrees and then died, and that was a worker who obviously got uh, ingested. That was one who accidentally orally ingested a massive dose. Accidentally. I don't know how you do that. I mean, you know, just because you're eating steak, some gets in your mouth. You only need a few grams in your mouth. You know, it didn't say how much uh, he ingested, but, you know, 10 grams would kill you. Like that, pretty quick. So, you know, the, the death rates are incredibly high, but the weight loss was incredibly high as well mm. before you died. Mm. So, um, but, but you got to remember, there would have been literally thousands that took the dose from the pharmacy, lost a lot of weight and survived. Mm. So, and even today, bodybuilders are still taking it. Um, so it's still around, 
But just just imagine being back in the 20s and going to your local chemist back then and saying, oh, I want to lose a bit of weight here. Oh, I've got the pill for you. Here's some DNP, dinitrophenol. Absolutely. It's too full. I'm glad that one's not around. Any well, other, any other um, uh, notable mentions while you're looking at these, Steve? Anything that you, you sort of think, there, well, you know, could have made the list? There was one, um, um, even Panax Ginseng. Panax Ginseng? Yep, they gave it to a group of men, that trained men, and they put on weight. Wow. <laughs> they built more muscle. I was going to say, how did it increase? I was going to say, did it help with testosterone production? Yeah. Yeah, right. And, and it, it built more muscle. Yeah. So that, they were trying to use it to trim down, but what they found was that it, it boosted testosterone and, and the anabolic hormones, IGF-1 and all that. So they actually put on more muscle. So if, if we want to use the term weight loss, mm-hmm. it didn't help them with their weight loss. It put right. on weight. But it probably did help with their fat loss in the long term. Because yeah. as they build more muscle tissue, their metabolic rate's going to increase. Correct. So. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's, what they, that's what they would have done. So there was that honorable mention. Okay. So there, there's a few that, that, that come out. Um, also, uh, the low-fat diet. That, that was one. It's not a supplement, but that came out well, as Well, this was big, wasn't it, back in the 70s and yeah. 80s? I mean, it was all about stripping out the fat. So yep. I think we've, uh, most people have moved on from that now. I'd like to think so. And because it didn't, it wasn't typically a supplement, mm-hmm. I didn't sort of put it in this list because we talked about top five supplements. But as an honourable mention, like, this is not a supplement either. This is a, a pharmaceutical drug, an industrial chemical. But uh, with the low-fat diet, you've got to remember that you've got, you got to go back to Ansel Keyes' days in 1957. Um, when, it, when he was talking about the fact that people are getting fatter and what's on their body is fat. So if you stop eating fat, you shouldn't get fat. Well, this is why pr- products like that keto, ketone products work yes. as well too because it, people make the assumption, oh, yeah. well, if this is what the problem is or this, yeah. is, what, this is what I need. No, it doesn't work the, like the, that. The ketone one is interesting because, you know, you want to be in ketosis because ketosis means you are burning fat. Mm-hmm. So the way to get into ketosis is to drink some ketones. So I get the logic with that, mm. but it, it doesn't make sense. I'm, and again, ketones have got some, you know, raspberry ketones are fantastically healthy for the body, mm-hmm. brain, liver, organs, all sorts of things, GI tract. Mm-hmm. So I only picked on it because people are using it for weight loss. Cool. Um, so, and the flour, the, the fibers, we'll, we'll group them together. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were good, you know, for the body, but if you have too much of them, they feed the firmicutes, which makes you more hungry. Yeah. So, again, it was only over a certain dose. Okay. And, of course, those fibres, except for the conjugate ones, like the, the, the beta-glucans are found in grain products. So you have a lot of those and, you know, you tend to put on weight anyway. Cool. So it's really interesting, isn't it? Good one, Steve. Yeah. I mean, obviously the best way to lose weight is, is to get out there and exercise and diet, but that's not what the podcast's about. We've got yep. future podcasts for that. Yep. All right. So now on to the Top five best. Starting at five, Steve. So we're gonna we, we'll build up the suspense. Right. So we'll start with a good one, and then we'll go to great. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll swap that one. I've got a, my my favorite ones last. Then. Okay. All right. So it's still not like these are all really good. This is this is the trick. But but these are all done. Um, these these papers are published recently, and they're well, on randomized controlled double blind placebo trials. One of the things I wanted to say as well too is that sometimes synergy isn't taken into effect with these because I mean, and this is I guess where you've got. Um, if you mix, you know, something that's maybe a a, yep. a one, yep. and you and you mix something else with a, like a one, instead of getting a two, you might get a four or three. Correct. So Correct. It, this is where synergy comes into it, and this is where you know understanding how to combine these things mm. is uh, a, a great deal of science. But Absolutely, Steve. As an individual ingredient, yeah. L- let's give me a number five. So these are ones that we like. Yeah, these are the ones we like. Now I like them all. Okay. Um. So it's a bit tricky. I so it was. Tricky to put them in order, but but by, by number five here is is a, a herb called yerba mate, as we like to call in Australia, yerba mate. Yerba mate, sorry, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. But it is it's yerba mate. Yeah, so. yerba mate. Now, now yerba mate is, is a really interesting herb. It's it's drunk in uh, socially in drinks, and you know it, it's a it drunk as teas as well. So it's so South American, yeah, South American. That's right. It's a, it's found a lot, and, and it's actually um, been trialled for. Fat loss, not just weight loss, which right. is why I really like it. So this could be higher up the list. This is a really good one, and and the great thing about these ones is is you got to remember that the best way to lose weight is to exercise and sure. yeah, you know, so so eat well, it, eat yep. well. So, so that we we we, we we're going to assume that everybody knows that. Yeah. So do that with these supplements because supplements only supplement a healthy lifestyle to mm-hmm. get you. So so keeping all that in mind. Yep. You ever matter was well, there was a randomized controlled uh, placebo controlled uh, trial. Now what that means is that you got a capsule um, that you didn't know what was in it. The doctor giving it to you didn't know what was in it, 
And they said, here's your capsule, take that, in this case, three times a day. Mm -hmm. And here's uh, the, the placebo group, didn't know they were getting the placebo, they were just taking this capsule too. And then just go ahead and do your normal live your thing, life. live your life. And they gave these people with a high BMI, which was greater than 25 in women, um, but less than 35. And so what they did was they they gave these people um, the obesity, and particularly around the waist here. So they gave them, and they gave them over 12 weeks. So they gave it a good test period. Now, the, the beautiful thing about this is that, that with this study, they lost a significant amount of body fat. How much? Well, it goes into... Um, about, well, I've got to remember how much it was now. Um, that's right. It was about 4.1 kilograms wow. over 12 weeks. Wow. Compared to the placebo, which was about one point something. It was quite low. Yeah, that's pretty good, Steve. So there was a significant difference. And the p-values were less than 0.05. So, and describe the p-value, Steve. Sorry, yeah. The p-value is, is a probability of something happening by chance. Right. Okay, so statistically, you, you need it to be as low as possible yep. to be as significant as possible. And the way the scientists cut it off is at 0.05. Right. That means there's a one in 20 chance that this happened by sheer fluke. Right. Anything less or longer shot than that, they think that's clinically significant. Right. So these all beat those. They all had p-values. One was p double zero four, for example. Wow. So what they found was, was what they gave them, they gave the capsule and did nothing else different, that they lost significantly more body fat. Mm. How and does that, it work, Steve? Do we know the mechanism of action? Yeah, it works by um, increasing adrenaline effectiveness on the fat cells. Ah. So so let's say you've got a fat cell here. Yeah. And um, the way you burn fat is, you know, you go for a run or you, you, uh, adrenaline binds to it and the body goes, oh, we need more energy because we're going for a run. So it releases fatty acids into the bloodstream to be used as energy. Mm -hmm. So the binding of the adrenaline works a lot more effectively when you're on yerba mate. Right. And also the insulin sensitivity works better. And what is insulin sensitivity, Steve? Right. Well, insulin is required to get nutrients into the cell. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that is, of course, that if you're insulin resistant, your body has to pump out more insulin. Yes. And the more insulin you have, the less fat you can burn. Right. So this makes insulin work better. Basically turns off the switch for burning fat. Correct. Which is why a lot of people, and regardless of whether you're going into a keto diet or mm -hmm. not, sh most people know that sugar is the arch enemy of weight loss. Yes. Um, the only time I think realistically, and again, we can probably get into this in more depth, to take in a lot of sugars is actually after a weight training session mm. where you actually want insulin yeah. because insulin is one of the most anabolic hormones in the body. Now, most of the time you think anabolism, anabolism, uh, you know, steroids, anabolic steroids, builds muscle. Mm. That is true. But then you could be uh, anabolic, Steve, sitting on the couch eating a donut because the sugar mm. creates anabolism, which just means adding more tissue, correct? It correct. creating more tissue. So that tissue could be fat. If you've just done a big weight training session and you've and you've worked out, you know, the muscle groups mm -hmm. and what have you, sugar is designed to replace the glycogen. Mm -hmm. You want insulin because that's going to promote growth in the right area. Absolutely. But for the most part, through the day, you want to try and avoid sugars as much as correct. possible, correct? And for weight loss, you do. And obviously, yerba mate is working on this insulin sensitivity. Yes. Um, so that's obviously part of the mechanism. Yeah, of it makes life. insulin work better. You need less insulin to do the same job. The body pumps out less insulin, makes yep. you burn more fat. Yep. Because <laughs> insulin's job is to bind, like grow and, and make yep. things yep. grow, correct? Mm -hmm. Like, like um, shut little nutrients inside cells. It does, and it also binds with growth hormone to form insulin-like growth factor one. Which is good if you're trying to build muscle tissue, yep. but terrible if you've got, uh, uh, you know, one of those diseases. You, well, you're sitting on your butt and you're not training yeah. and you're eating more ca calories than what your body actually needs, you know, for its bodily function and what have you, then that's just going to convert to fat. Correct. So and, yerba mate, yeah. Yeah, and yerba mate also, when they took it before exercise, they found that the amount of fat oxidation you had was much greater. So it actually switched you over to fat burning more than carbohydrate burning. Wow, that's good. Incredible, isn't so it? So fasted would be excellent and then go for your morning walk or yep. spin class or- Yep, have some yerba mate. Fartlek, whatever you want to call it. Fartlek, I love that term. You that's do. a real term for running. Steve loves fartlek. I love, love fartlek. They're really good. <laughs> do people know what that is or not? Well, I think they're assuming, Steve. They're assuming? No. Look, it, it means you run fast and then run slow again, simply. Yeah. So people think we're being really- Oh, you Tabata. <laughs> Sounds like a nice, it's like, it's like a ciabatta. It's like a bread. Ciabatta. No, no. Ciabatta is like, <laughs> yeah, it's not bread. It's not. 
<laughs> it's it's the opposite of bread. <laughs> it's doing like you know six seconds you know sprint and then yeah. you know twenty seconds rest or twenty seconds on ten seconds off. I mean like there's different ways. I forget exactly which which way they they recommend. Oh. I, I like I like doing sprints for the cardio. It's probably you know a bit more rest period than might be what I should have. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's 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 interesting. So that's a good one. You have a oh, thanks, David. Didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, yeah. uh, next. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, Steve. Uh, well, we should. I mean, we're we're, we're skipping over exercise here because we, we, we can do that to, on another podcast. Well, I know, and, and I know we, we are. We got some really good ones on that. So, so this is a really good one because it burns fat. And that's why I like it. That's why it could be higher up, but it's it's not just weight loss because if you want to lose weight, you just have a, a diuretic. Yep. And you'll pee yourself more. Well, not pee yourself, but you'll pee more. <laughs> Hopefully not pee yourself more. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder so what that ex- smell was. It's like yeah. a musty sort of a hang smell. On, hang on a second. It's like an old folks' home. <laughs> it's like, hey, granddad. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, All right. So what's so we're at number four. Number four. Yeah. Yeah. Four is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're like a Thunderbird. <laughs> Brooklyn with no Thunderbirds. Four. <laughs> That's right. That was a submarine number. Five, <laughs> four, three, two. Thunderbirds are go. Thunderbirds. Yeah. I remember that. Miss Moneypenny, would you like me to drive you, Miss Moneypenny? <laughs> <laughs> You remember uh, that? Yeah, I oh, do remember it. Pa- I'm old. But- pa- Parker, could you just pull around the corner? <laughs> you know, and they'd walk like this. Yeah. It's, it's so great. You don't see that anymore, do you? Well, you just did, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Anyway, okay, number number four. Number four comes from the humble oranges. I Lemons. Yes, I know which one this one is, Steve, but I'm not going to steal your thunder. Oh, well, it's called uh, Citrus Orantium. Love citrus orantium, yeah. and and when back in the day when I first started selling supplements, I, I had some some products that I was selling, and they were really effective, mm. really good. I mean, it is mm. a relatively humble product, if you yep. like, because yep. it's not particularly complicated, but it no, works. It works great. Yeah. Um, the the mechanisms are multiple actions, but basically it works like um, it's got an agent in it called synephrine. Yep. Now, synephrine sounds like epinephrine, yep. doesn't it? So the ephrine has a similar binding to adrenaline or epinephrine. So adrenaline is great for fat loss. Mm-hmm. And, and we know that there was one, one agent that didn't make the list that was a, quite a bad one called, called ephedra back oh, in the olden sure. days. Yeah. And that's M- a, Hong, um, yeah, my Hong. Remember that chew on the stick, Steve? Yep, yep. So like traditional uh, in, in uh, Asia, that, yeah. that, that actually do is they'd have these sticks and, and it helped with satiety, yep. uh, but gave you energy yes. and just burnt fat like no tomorrow. Absolutely. Yep. So, so great. Where do I get these sticks, Steve? Yeah, yeah. All, all banned. Yep. This stuff's not banned. It's found in foods. It's quite safe. Yep. Um, so, so it's a really, really good one for burning fat. So it works by binding to the adrenaline receptors again on the fat cells, releasing fat into the system where another great fat loss agent we'll get to a bit later called carnitine, Mm -hmm. which takes the fat from the blood, puts it into the mitochondria to be burnt. So it works very well together with that. So synephrine is is a good one. It's found in a lot of foods. Um, For Zant, our our, our food code here says it's generally regarded as safe. So it's a pretty good supplement to take um, as long as you don't go too overboard with it. Sure, like Um, anything, Steve. it, It works very well. So it works basically on the adrenaline receptors to burn fat. Cool. Because it's similar to epinephrine. And there are a lot of human trials on it here, and, and the amount of, of weight loss here is, is quite incredible. Yeah. And, again, it's it's very synergistic with caffeine. Give me give me some of the studies, Steve, and tell me how much people lost over what period yep. of time. All right. There's some great studies in here. So some of the studies here where they were just simply giving them um, 100 milligrams a day, which is a very moderate dose, yep. they lost up to 2.4 kilograms of fat over um, like six weeks. Wow. wow. So, so nearly five, five kilograms over a 12 week period. If they continue without, yes. without much, um, uh, change to their diet, exercise, anything else? No, so that's d- right. Double blind placebo? Yep, they did double blind placebo. Sample size of the study, Steve? Do we do it? Does it have oh, that, that only had 30, that people, but still. Only, but still, that's that's reasonable. Yeah, you've got to measure the fat level. you got to, you know, with measuring fat, it's quite complex for people because you've got to put them in machines or give them bioimpedance analysis to measure how much fat they've got. You can't just weigh them. Okay. Because that's a, <laughs> a, a you know, you could have lost water. Safe, effective, from oranges, from lemons, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So it's, it's a good one to use, and it's great to use with caffeine. Um, because caffeine stimulates natural adrenaline release. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, this is where 
we could theory craft, if you like, um, how to stack some of these ingredients. Yes. Um, but we're just talking about the individual ingredients. Totally today. individual ingredients. Yeah, yeah. They, they work very well. Now, now they've done rat studies to, to see how bad it was. And what they gave the rats was 2.4 grams. So we're talking 100 milligrams. Yes. And they were giving them... 2,400 milligrams, milligrams per kilo. Oh, so if per the rat, kilo. So if the rat was a kilo. Holy cow. So, so you know, it's 24 times and it still wasn't toxic. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I think yeah. in a lot of these these studies, especially in Australia, we're very, very um, yeah. risk adverse. Very. I think probably too much. I think we need to have more of that generally regarded as safe. Yep. But, um, you know, toxicity levels are important. Yep. Uh, and well, that's a super safe supplement if you're looking for something that's safe. I mean, if they very safe. So, so, do they have an upper limit of toxicity level, Steve? Did they? Um, yes. The that? the upper limit they found on mice was four thousand milligrams per kilogram. Oh, you, there's no way you need to take that. And, and is is there a is there a flex point, Steve? Or you know, in terms of diminishing returns after a certain point? About 100 milligrams. Regardless of weight and size. That's correct. Yeah, Yeah, because they did one at 203 milligrams. Yep. And it didn't have much difference for that one. Okay. There's There's only so much these things can do. No, that's it. Look, there's an apex point, and yeah. I always say that as well too. In terms of, um, yeah. you know, your money and and you know, with with supplement theory craft out there, which you know, most people just use Google keywords, and we always have a bit of a crack oh, about that because yeah. uh, they don't know their science, Steve. But yeah. in terms of obviously, you know, all of that, you want to find the right apex point. Yeah, the more is not always. Better. And the funny thing is, is that it sounds like with this product here, yeah. it goes up to 100 milligrams and then pretty much will flatten out. There's a lot of ingredients where it goes up like this and, and then down in. like that. Uh, it's bell curve, right? Yeah, there's so, something that we mentioned a bit too much is, is quite toxic. Yep. So this is also anti-inflammatory. Oh. So it helps with, you know, if you're trying to exercise and you've got sort of joint aches and that yeah. sort of thing, it can be very useful for that as well. Mm. So yes, it works. It worked, it worked at 50 milligrams. It was only two kilos over six weeks because that was the other arm of the study. Mm-hmm. So 100 seemed to be the sweet point. Cool. So it was good. It, it's a really, really good one. And, um, you know, that's why I like it. And there's a lot of research on it, which is another reason I liked it. Love it. The research is, is good. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, especially to develop safety um, as well too, Steve, at the end of the day. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's quite safe because it's found in foods. And speaking of supplements that are found in foods. Number three. Number three, which is, well, probably the most popular supplement taken on the earth. Caffeine. Maybe? Caffeine. Has to be. Has to be caffeine. And look, Stephen, and the funny thing is yeah. as well too is that this is quite a deep subject because yes. – anyway, I'll let you go. Why is it beneficial? Well, it's beneficial. This is a meta-analysis done um, – um, published in 2019 where it's a – in other words, a meta-analysis is you know like one of those randomized control trial all put together, all these studies put together, and they, they assessed um, in this case, you know, um, well, depending on which arm the study, but about 34 studies. So we're talking about a very powerful piece of information. Was this The Lancet or? Oh, this was published in, um, what was it, Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition. Okay. Yeah, so a pretty good one there. So so what they found was absolutely, um, that, and I'll just read the, the, the absolute conclusion, the current meta-analysis demonstrates that caffeine intake might promote weight, BMI, and body fat reduction. And the third part is what I'm interested in because it's the fat levels. And this is why I picked this as a really good one. Because it's well researched, it's it, we we know dosage on this one. It it depends on how much you want to take per day. Um, two two hundred. I, I want to talk. I want to break that down. Okay, we'll come back to that. The standard one is four hundred a day is considered safe. Four hundred milligrams. Milligrams of caffeine a day. Okay, so can, you're can, can you just break it down for everybody out there? So if you're having a cup of Earl Grey, which tastes to me like mm. dishwater. Wife right? loves that. It's uh, disgusting. Dashy. It is. It's, just, it's like a, it's like someone got a posy and and just sort of threw it in there and then mm. poured hot water on top. Yeah, it's disgusting. I know. Um, but English breakfast, I like. And actually, oh. there's there's a good company out there called T Two here in Australia that make all different sorts. They've got Melbourne breakfast and Sydney breakfast, and oh. they've got like little blue flowers in them and yeah. Mountain Blend, and you know, very cool. But my favourite standard tea, if you like, is um, English breakfast. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and how much how much milligrams of caffeine is in there? Twenty in a tea on average. 20, 20. 20 milligrams. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty pretty low. Pretty weak, yeah. Because I mean, a lot of people have a cup of tea before bed, and I remember we did the podcast on circadian rhythms mm. and caffeine and all the rest of it. For the most part, Steve, I mean that. I mean, if you're having trouble sleeping, don't have a cup of tea before no. bed. But for the most part, 
um, 20 milligrams is not particularly very much. No, it's bugger all. And, and you've got to remember that, you know, if you have chocolate too, that's got, depending on how much dark chocolate you've got, that's got caffeine in it as well. Oh, do you know how much? Depends on the dose, but it was around 40 if you have a serve of dark chocolate. So, so what's the serve? Well, it was about, I think, 40 Because, I mean, my serve versus Brooklyn serve, oh. I, I'm having, like, just a little square, just Bro- a little sliver, like, just, just you know, can you just, you know, whereas Brooklyn's like a block of chocolate. Brooklyn has, uh, is, is absolutely fantastic. She's chocoholic. It's incredibly impressive, the amount of chocolate it you is. can eat. It really is. It's a... It's, it's got all over her face. Yes. Yeah, uh, like, it's just, Brooklyn, what's that on your, on your jumper? Like, it's just chocolate. She's yeah. got chocolate fingers. I mean, I get paperwork and it's just like chocolate, chocolate. smear. I hope it's chocolate smear. <laughs> so, so, and it's like, you know, it reminds me of Brooklyn's favourite game. Yes. yes what's, so what's her favourite game? Uh, name that stain. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because she's a hillbilly. She's like, what, what is that? Um, uh, mm, it's like scratch, lick. <laughs> scratch and sniff. Yeah, scratch and sniff. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, in terms of the amount of chocolate that you're allowed, yeah. well, you can have as much as you want, but in terms of the amount of caffeine, um, how much was it? About 40 it milligrams? 40 milligrams and, and 40 serve. grams, yeah. 40 milligrams and 40 grams. Yeah, 40, 40 grams of chocolate has 40 milligrams of caffeine. Okay, that's good to know. So it's, it's, it's not, and that's dark chocolate, so so it's really low as well. Uh, if you want to step it up and get into the real, say, if you had a, oh, a, a monster drink, yeah. Well, well, let's go coffee. Coffee. Because, I mean, about, the, the 80. Made, about 80 on, on, a, on a single shot. Yep. 70, okay. Um it's funny. I, I, I love I love the states. Hey, like, and I just go over there, and it's like, um, you know, I'll, look, I'll have a medium coffee, and it's like this bucket that's bigger yeah, than that. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, holy cow! Yeah. And the amount of caffeine that they're getting, I think Matt worked out that they were getting like over six hundred milligrams of caffeine in some of their sure Aventis or Grandes yeah. or I don't know. Whatever it was over five hundred, and and that's like, um, you know, that's that's getting up there. That that's is. a that's a fair bit. You know, there's studies done on older people where they give them 500 milligrams of caffeine for Alzheimer's and it helps that. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, it activates your brain. It's, it blocks adenosine receptors. Now, adenosine is the thing that sedates your brain and puts you to sleep. So if you're going to block those receptors, and caffeine's one of the best things. Theobromine's pretty good at it. That's yep. also found in chocolate. Mm-hmm. But caffeine is the master of them all. Mm-hmm. And blocking adenosine really opens your brain up, which is why caffeine is such a great way as a like a pre-workout as well. Because it stimulates you and makes you uh, energy you, which helps you train. But as far as its, it's uh, mechanism of action in the body, yep. does it also help with, uh, you know, uncoupling proteins or is it working through how? Steve? It works It works a couple of ways. The first way is it helps you release adrenaline. Yep. And adrenaline is a great hormone to burn fat. Yep. I'm sorry. The second thing is that it actually lowers your perception of work. So in other words, if you take caffeine, you, you don't think you're working out as hard. Yeah. Actually, it's really funny. The other day I um, – uh, took a supplement I won't mm-hmm. mention because mm-hmm. we, we just want to talk about ingredients here. We don't want, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, my my lifts my, significantly improved my the amount that I was lifting, yep. like significant. Yeah. Um, like I, I was going from um, the 100 kilo uh, dumbbell bench press that I normally – no, I'm just going to – no one's going to believe that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I Should think have I made it 80. <laughs> someone would have might have believed that. No, um, yeah. Uh, and um, I went up by five – five uh, kilos yep. and um, I was able to punch out more reps. Mm. Um, so it's significant improvement in performance. But, yeah. you know, that's going to help you to train harder on the treadmill yep. when you're going for your run. You, mm-hmm. You're going to be able to go for longer and maybe yep. harder. Yep. So is that the the part of the that's effect? Of one of the reasons. There's, okay. not, there's another one too, yep. of course. Um, caffeine also has a way of um, um, hitting those beta adrenergic receptors themselves and has and releases – uh, a, a great, uh, a, 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 like it actually acts as adrenaline itself. Right. Its structure is quite similar again. So again, it works that way. And probably the other way that works is like like you said, that it, it pips you up. So if you're going for a, a walk in the morning, you may be energized to go for a run. Like you were saying, you can actually do more work on caffeine. Uh, I'm also mindful as well too, if you're training with weights, there's, mm-hmm. there's diminishing returns though too, because obviously – Caffeine is also catabolic. Now, yep. not just catabolic to fat, but also muscle tissue correct. as well too, correct? Yes. Yes. So there's a balance point between taking a pre-workout before you lift weights. But no, no, you want to get in. You want to train hard. <laughs> yes, train hard. And then you want to get your post-workout recovery to, yep. to, to blunt the, the catabolic effect on muscle tissue. Correct. But at the end of the day, you're training with muscle. You're mm. actually tearing, you're breaking the muscle tissue down yes. by part. So there's, yeah, timing of nutrition is big. But for fat loss... Obviously, caffeine, train harder, 
you know, obviously help with the mechanism of, of utilizing f- and burning fat, mm. but it also is a fantastic, fantastic ingredient uh, used in synergy. And the old one, Steve, and again, this is not legal now, so we can mention it was ephedrine, caffeine, and aspirin. Yeah. Though that was the old school stack. I mean, we're talking Arnie's and, mm. you know, all the rest of it. This is what they used to use because those three products in concert work so well. But, but caffeine is, uh, has a King. significant role. It also um, stimulates more uh, a neurotransmitter release, which blunts your appetite. Right, which is also good for if, you, if, if you're trying to lose a little bit yeah, of weight. Yeah, you're trying to gain so, weight, mate. So, so things like white willow bark aspirin um, prolong the half-life, which means yeah. that uh, it remains effective for longer before your correct. body uh, breaks it down through the liver, correct? Correct, yeah, by cytochrome P450, 3 right. or 4. Yeah. And, and so the great thing about caffeine is now you can get an ex- extended release forms. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, like in the olden days when you take loads of caffeine, you have this big crash afterwards. Yeah. And there are extended release ones which give you more fat burning for yeah. longer yeah. and without the crash. Well, well, the trick I think from a lot of people from using caffeine and a couple of things, um, the jitters, yeah. uh, not being able to eat afterwards. I mean, you said that. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people, because the amount of caffeine that they're putting in there now, in Australia um, uh, with the certain laws, especially in canned drinks mm-hmm. and that, I think you're allowed a maximum of 160, which I think is too little to be honest. It's a half a litre, yeah. I, I, I think if it's if it's, um, if it's if it's uh, how would you say, labelled correctly, mm. that we should be able to go to a grass level, which is generally regarded as safe. And Steve, you're reckoning that the toxicity level in Australia, I think, is set at 600 milligrams. Right, yeah. um, realistically, I think you should be able to go up to that. But I mean, this is just my opinion. But mm. Steve, I, I can hear a lot of people saying, no, caffeine causes heart attacks, weakens the heart muscle, you know, all that sort of stuff. What, what do you say to that? It doesn't weaken the heart muscle. It puts a stress on the heart, but the stress on the heart's not a bad stress. So he's going for a run. Exactly. Um, you know, but, uh, these, these, if, if a mild ca- dose of caffeine gives you a heart attack in your heart, it's pretty close to the end of its. That's exactly you know, right. You got to, you got to, you, you know, it's this like is, going for a walk and having a heart attack. Well, as, as you know, most people have a heart attack first thing in the morning, don't they, Steve? When they get out of bed. Yeah, because cortisol levels spike in the morning, yeah. and it puts a mild stress on the body to get you out to hunt and gather your food. So, like anything, you got heart disease. Yeah, yeah. we'll probably avoid caffeine or anything that that challenges the heart too much. But yeah. I mean, if you got heart disease, Steve, one of the best things you can do is exercise, which and, means and that your heart rate's going to get up, right? Yes. So, yeah, anyway, it's one of those things where you need to obviously, with anything, talk to yeah. your doctor and determine what's best for you. Anything else surprising about caffeine, Steve? Um, no, I think that's a bit out. It, it blocks the adenosine receptors, which I've said. No, I think I think it's pretty, pretty good. It's dose-dependent for fat loss. So that's why the more you can take safely, the better off you are. So that, that was the main thing about caffeine. Cool. It's a good one. We're down to, oh, my, no, number, we're down to number two now. Two? Two, yeah. Now, this one's an interesting one. Have you heard of gynostemma? I have. Well, gynostemma is, is one that may not be well known out there, but this one, I couldn't believe it. it, it was a, there's, there's some really good studies on this. And, I, I've, again, I picked a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, and this was done in Korea where they gave them um, um, 40 per 80 subjects. They, they gave one group placebo and one group non-placebo, and the people in this study lost uh, an equivalent of, of 4.7 kilograms. Now, it was weight. Over what period? Uh, 12 weeks. So pretty good. Just This is just one herb. At, at a, that was only measuring weight, Steve, not fat? Yep, that was just weight. Okay. Um, so they, they also improved their metabolic markers and improved, improved their overall health. Okay. What does it come from? Gonostemo. I mean, what yeah, is that? Yeah, it's, it's a plant. Um, yeah, it's just a, just a herb that you can get from around the world. Uh, Did you know where it comes from, gonostemo? Um, I think it's originally a Korean plant. Okay. Yeah, but but it's 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 very well um, it's throughout the world now sort of thing, so it's a really good one. Um, and, and the great thing about this, and I'll read from the paper, it's a study revealed that um, – Adipoin, which is a, a, a chemical in it, which um, is, a potent, is a potent anti-obesity reagent that does not produce any significant adverse effects. That's great. And it may be effective for treating obese individuals. And this was published in Obesity, which is a mainstream medical journal. Right. So I found that very interesting. And again, 450 milligrams a day was the dose they used, a placebo controlled. There were no adverse effects. They measured, they measured their livers and kidneys and everything else. So they managed to get rid of all this weight without any problems whatsoever, mm. which I love because, you know, most people go, oh, let's do a weight loss trial and we'll just see how much weight they lose. And that's great, but we want to know if it causes harm. You know, we, we don't want to cause harm because, you know, weight loss is a, a, a tricky one because people who are overweight are usually unhealthy anyway. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great supplement to take. And again, 
Um, you know, it can be taken with the other agents there to work very well. They didn't understand the mechanism of how it worked, but they were working on that. Okay. So they still don't? No, no, no. no. no it was, it was two, as of 2019, they didn't know the mechanism of action. Usually these things, uh, by the way that it works, is insulin, but I'm guessing that. Wow. Yeah. So very interesting, eh? Yeah. Very Love good. that one. Okay. That's a good one. Now, I know what number one is. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. Really? And not because and I can't see because I haven't even got my glasses on, but it's got to be a, it's got to be L carnitine, of which is that right, Steve? It's partly right. Okay. Now it was a draw, actually. Well, oh, okay, that's interesting. So, I mean, in terms of weight loss, and this is the different things, right? There's different forms of of carnitine. Yes. So, acetyl L carnitine is considered to be the best. Yeah. Um, and I think that's because it, it crosses the blood brain barrier and has has a positive effect on the brain as well too, make you feel Increases a little bit dopamine, better. Yeah. But you've got L carnitine tartrate. You've yep. got elemental L carnitine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got f- uh, f- uh, fumarate, L carnitine fumarate. Yep. So, there's different styles. But yep. I mean, in terms of Pretty much, well, everyone mm. uh, uses acetyl L carnitine for fat loss. Mm. I also like tartrate because I did read that it had a positive effect on freeing up bound testosterone. Yes. So, for people that are actually, for males specifically, that mm. are looking to improve body composition, I think that tartrate is actually a superior form, but it doesn't have the marketing behind it, doesn't no. have the sexiness of it. it. Tastes a lot better as well, too, by the way. And it's concentrated it's in the muscles. So, it's good for, for where you, you want the carnitine. So, the reason why that was number one is yeah. because of that reason. Reason, right. And I've got an equal number one too, but but it's not really a supplement. Okay, but it's so that's why I've put a, it's, it's like a special mention one. Oh, okay. but but the carnitine yeah. one's great. The dopamine, you're right, it gets in the brain. The seed when you acetylize something, it can cross the blood brain barrier, and you get a bit more more dopamine. Yep, which makes you feel a little bit better, better. when you're sort of smashing it out of the gym. Well, also for a weight loss point of view, dopamine is the precursor to adrenaline. Ah. so you get more adrenaline release. Okay, so you you do actually more. Fat burning. So, so that's why. So again, good. stacking that with caffeine, good, oh. good, good, good stack. Look, you know, and synephrines and all the other, you know, ones there. Yeah. They're, they're really, really good. Now, you know, it's it's a it's. I know we're, we're conscious of time, but that's a really good one for fat burning because it takes the fat from the blood and gets it into the mitochondria to burn. All the other things we've we've talked about, loads of them, are liberating fat from your fat cells. Mm-hmm. So that's why carnitine is great at about two grams a day to get the uh, into the fat cells. Okay, again, with the amount, two grams is always, which isn't very much, right? No. But uh, diminishing returns after that bell it curve is. Or, or just flat? You, you you don't want to have too much carnitine because of the TMAO production. It can be in some people's Smell guts. like fish. Smells like fish, yeah. Yeah, so this is where people who, who, who are missing, and I forget exactly what it was because Matt was talking about it, an, an enzyme, is yeah. that right? In the gut, yeah. So, so it, basically it crashes TMAO. T, t, AMO. Oh, TMAO. TMAO. I always forget that. Which is, um, they spoke about it in the Game Changers um, uh, podcast uh, uh, documentary that they did, but basically related to eating too much meat. But you yeah. can actually get it from this as well, too. Of course, yeah. So, um, and that creates, is it heart disease, Steve? It's associated with heart disease, right. yeah, because it it, it, it it can, but it's it's controversial because it's also found in deep sea fish. Mm. And deep sea fish is good for your heart, you know, with all the. So, it's a bit controversial, but okay. but yeah, but but if you've got a good healthy gut microbiome, then yep. you won't have any problems. But if you are taking L carnitine and people say, "Man, you smell funny, you smell like fish," mm. um, get off it because yep. you're it's it's not working for you. It's going down the wrong pathway. It's, it's converting down the wrong. wrong pathway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's the that's what. But two grams works fine. Yep. You don't need more than that. Okay, that's a good one. Cool. So, so that, what's your honourable mention? Well, the Steve? honourable mention was protein. Protein, of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, and I've, I'll, I'm going to quote a study on this one because is it a supplement? I sort of thought it's not really in the supplement. It, you can supplement it, of course, but it, it works so well for people who, uh, you know, who really want to burn body fat because they've done studies, and, and I'll just quote this one here. This is a study where they said, okay, guys, we're going to give you a, a group of two grams per day of protein yep. of kip per kilo, yep. which is a pretty high dose. Yep. And they said to this group, right, well, we're going to give you even more protein. We're going to stuff as much protein as you can possibly eat. Mm-hmm. And they got them up to 4.4 grams per kilo. So they had much more calories, but this extra calorie load was in protein. Okay, so they, they stuffed them full of protein. Yeah. Powders, steaks, all that. Yep. They, they gave them whatever food they, they were happy to eat. It was, it was all protein. And what they found was these guys' calories went up but there was no significant difference in their weight loss. Wow. They both still lost weight. Yeah. So this extra calories of protein didn't convert into fat. 
Which is which is funny because I mean again I the, the protein can through gluconeogenesis yep. be broken down into blood sugar right can yeah with aniline but is aniline. the process of doing that equivalent to the amount of calories that your body receives from it correct yeah you because I always theorize that because yeah. and this is the thing where people yeah. talk about consuming too much protein right yeah it's like but yeah it doesn't seem to and that was anecdotal only yeah with with people that are, you'd have on really high protein diets yeah um so the myth Steve then around uh, you you know you're gonna Get liver disease from too much. No, you don't protein, get liver sort of disease stuff. from that. No, um, you know the the the, the thing around it was uh, it's like they really think it's the kidneys, and the reason for that is because the kidneys can process protein. Now, so how much acid, right? Yeah, yeah. Your, your, your rates and uric acids are, are produced from protein, but but if you've got healthy kidneys, it works fine to have at least up to this level, right. which is a huge level. Yeah. Um, and the the thing is, like, if you've got like an old elderly cat, they put them on a lower protein diet because their kidneys start to yes. to fade. But that doesn't mean that the protein causes kidney damage. It's like saying. Going to the gym is great for your legs. Doing squats is great for your legs. But if you've got a broken leg, you don't do squats. Yeah, of course. So if your legs are fine, you do squats, and most people's kidneys are fine. Yeah. So it's totally fine. And and just just reading the conclusion of this tell, tells it all. It says consuming 5.5 times the recommended daily ounce of protein has no effect on body composition in resistance-trained individuals who otherwise maintain the same training regime. Huh? So is that saying that anything more than the RDI or the RDI, which I think is about – one gram per pound, is it? Is yeah, it well, yeah. Well, one pound per one 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 per pound or two per kilo, which is about the same. Yes, that that's a that's, that's a that's, higher dose. Yeah. Oh, is that a higher dose? So that's higher than. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's like, I think I think the amount of RDI is like one per. Oh, yeah. Uh, like yeah, one, one per, per kilo. kilo it's yeah. like five hundred. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, low. right? Like, yeah. Well, it's really low. Um, but they're saying that it doesn't have any impact on muscle tissue. No. It, it doesn't build any more. No, it doesn't build any more because you, you you have enough. But but are you talking about in trained athletes? Or? Trained athletes. So these are people that are exercising, and they, they said the other part of the conclusion is this was the first interventional study to demonstrate that consuming a hypercaloric, high-protein diet does not result in an increase in body fat. So what this means is oh, that, increase in body fat, but it would increase muscle tissue. Yeah, it could See, increase muscle muscle tissue. Is this saying that it doesn't increase muscle tissue, or, or it doesn't it, say? In this study, it didn't. It didn't say. Did no, it, it didn't increase muscle tissue. Okay. And the reason for that is because there's the, there's a thing called with protein called TEF, and it's called the thermic effects of food. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we've heard of that, but yeah. that means that. Um, protein is a very big TEF agent. In other words, it increases your basal metabolic rate safely, not, unlike the uncoupling protein nasties. It does it in a, in a better way. Right. Because it's a pain in the ass. If you think of an amino acid, which is what protein is, it's got an amine group, NH3, and you've got a carboxylic acid group, C O O H one n and that's nothing like fat. So you got to, to get that to fat is like work, 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 and eventually, and the energy taken, it burns To do off. that, yeah. So, so what this is saying is that if, if you want to lose body fat, train, of course, but you can increase your protein levels to a level and it's not going to affect your body composition. So you can actually have more protein than- Affect than, in a negative than, way. It's actually going to affect in a positive, positive way. Positive way. It'll put on muscle. So it doesn't put fat on But hang on. Doesn't the study say that it doesn't increase muscle tissue? It didn't in this study because they gave the other group to- Two, two grams per kilo of muscle. So it was already a very high protein diet. Right, right. Okay. Sorry, I thought it was against RDI. So, oh, no. so they were still giving the other, the, the, the control group, two yeah. grams of protein. Two grams per, kilo, per big, Whereas this yeah. was 4.4. Yeah. And it's not saying, so the difference between the two grams and the 4.4 mm. made no impact on more muscle tissue. Correct. But it did have a positive effect on fat loss. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't they did not put on any more fat oh. or anything. Okay. So you can eat more calories without putting fat on. Okay. Well, I'm happy with that. And that's good because. You know, you got to remember that that in the, in the real world, people want to feel full. Yes. And if they're hungry all day, they're going to go, oh, too hungry. I'm going to stop a Mac. And this is what we you know. When I was in clinic, this is the worst thing. So, you know? so you're better off stopping off and grabbing a, a protein shake. I mean, yep. I'm talking about outside of your meals yeah. or going having a tin of tuna at night yep. or something like that. Exactly. It doesn't sound appealing. I'd rather have a chocolate protein shake. Thanks very much. Exactly. Um, but some, yes. some high protein, low carbohydrate protein source mm -hmm. that will stop you putting on fat. Mm. And, and the calories, because uh, we used to think calories in, calories out. And these sort of studies, and there's a num number of them now, they show that, that it's not about that because of the thermic effect of foods. That's a good ad addition, Steve. Yeah, I liked it. I liked good it. Good one. It was a good one. Any other thing that you want to mention about top five or bottom five? Well, this one's a top and bottom five, um, Clembuterol. 
Talking about um, <laughs> horses, uh, horses yeah. for courses, Steve, I think they say. Horses for courses, So, so clenbuterol yeah. is a drug mm-hmm. that is typically give, given to horses to increase their uh, oxygenation in their lungs, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lung tonic for the poor horses. Um, but what they found is that, um, again, bodybuilders that are the sneaky little merchants that they are, yeah. found out that it had a significant uh, improvement in body composition yeah. through burning fat. Yep. Um, Bans, illegal, dangerous, all that. We better say that. Well, there's some interesting things about it that I do understand. And again, cursory, Steve, you might be able to add more. Um, it does um, uh, displace or or use up uh, taurine, I think, significantly. Yeah. Now, taurine also being incredibly important and in the most abundant amino acid in the heart. Yes. Also, um, uh, because obviously it's burning fat so quickly as well too, the the stresses that it can put on your good fats in your body as well too can also become problematic. Now, oh, that's yeah. just anecdotal. Mm-hmm. I did know somebody who was using clenbuterol back in the day who ended up dying of a heart attack, I think had an arterial tear. Um, and uh, and that's, I think, probably because the displacement or, or the, the utilisation of the taurine and probably the lack of healthy fats mm-hmm. that this person had sort of created an environment for that. Uh, again, Steve, th- this is just what I've pieced together. I'm not a scientist. So uh, uh, we're not by any means endorsing clenbuterol. Oh, no. And obviously it is illegal uh, in Australia, and I'm not sure what the legality status is in other parts mm. of the world. I think it is sold for humans, though, too, Steve. I think you can actually get human tablets in certain parts of the world. Wow. Um, having said that, how does it work? It works like the way you say it does. It, it catabolizes fat by stimulating. Because remember, we, we, when you take an asthma medication, it's like um, it causes a bronchodilation, which is like adrenaline. So when you have the cell, the stalbutamol, the, the, the puffers, so it works like adrenaline, breaks down fat in your body. So it gives you a dose of adrenaline that releases fats into your system. Yep. And it, it, it's highly catabolic, so it does break down muscle tissue right. like your heart. Yep. And and what they the bodybuilders who do it have to have – you know, eat huge amounts of fish because it's high in essential oils and high in taurine. Yeah, and then you know, if they don't do everything right, they're they're in they're in cactus. Yes, they they, they can. It's, it's um, bad. Yeah, so you got to be careful. But again, incredibly effective. But maybe leave that one for the horses. Definitely. Yeah, there's legal drugs too, like fentanyl that we could talk about. <sighs> Just to- <laughs> well, how many people are, is that is that killing in the states at the moment? Because they, they mix it in with uh, the other drugs, don't they? Oh, Steve? like fenfen. Yeah, oh, that, fen- that is a fentanyl. I'm thinking. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they, they they do come. And then now, now they just have fentamine, which is just a type of speed that stops your appetite, basically. Right. Uh, that That's prescribed. That's an S4 drug in yep. Australia. Everyone's on it, you know. It's like, well, so, I'm not on it, Steve. Well, I'm not on it. No, everyone's, everyone's on it. On well, it. Well, the, a lot of overweight people you know, are you on go, it. Which one of you guys was on it then? You know, you guys are on it. Steve's no, on it. I know. I know people are on it. No. Uh, no, I know someone who lost 24 kilos in three months on it. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, it works, but it's just, sorry? Yeah. Oh, I won't mention his or her name. But um, yeah, they they are. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah. So quite a again, it's just just bad choices for 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 what I would think is a good way to burn fat. I'd rather go to, go for a walk. You should, Steve. But most people are lazy and yeah. they're looking for a shortcut. And you can or go for a walk. They're looking to maximise their their efforts. So yep. they want to, you know, again, I don't think anybody can call any of the fitness athletes lazy. No, but they want to maximise their gain and, and maximise their their time frame. That's what these good um, things are for. For other people that are sitting on the couch looking for a magic bullet, they will never stop looking because they want their donuts and their Netflix. Yep. So, um, yeah. That's a, that. So they're the ones. There's other drugs too they use. I won't go into the injections and stuff. But, but that, those are the five top supplements that you can use safely, mm. effectively, to enhance your fat loss while you're Good exercising one. and eating well. Nice one, Steve. Yeah, it's a good day. Eh? Yeah, thank I you. I like them. All right, guys. Well, that's all that we've got time for today. Steve, mate, we're going to be back next week with some more. Yes. Done. Can't Thanks, wait. guys, for listening. We'll see you soon. See you later. 